Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create a rust style text effect in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. If you're using a Mac, then when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. Now with that out of the way, we'll want to get started. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to hit control N on the keyboard in order to bring up the new image dialog box. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, we're going to name this, let's just name it Rust Text because that's what we're making. Our width is going to be 3,840 pixels, our height is 2,160 pixels, resolution is 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, background contents, it really doesn't matter, we're going to be uh, putting in a picture on top of it or you can use it within any of your designs uh, that you may have already. Uh, and we're gonna be using Adobe RGB 1998 and square pixels. So let's hit create, and we now have our image ready to begin working on. Now one thing that I am going to say is, I'm not gonna show you how to create the background for the Rust text. What uh, I am going to be using for this tutorial is a background that I have already made a long time ago uh, in one of my earlier tutorials called the Wooden Desktop Wallpaper. Now I have a link in the description below on where you can watch that uh, video so that you can learn how to create this background. But for right now, let me just bring in that background so that we can get started with the actual text effect. And as you can see, we now have our background here in our image. Now, like I said, this is the wooden desktop background that I created for a, a wallpaper tutorial that I did. It's in the description below as a link. Uh, but now let's begin by creating the actual text. And the font that I am using is called Abaddon. Now I have a, another link in the description below where you can download this particular font. But for right now, Let's just go as if you already have it. Now over here on your uh, foreground and background color, just to make this a little bit easier, we are going to switch that. We're gonna hit D on the keyboard in order to make it the default colors, and then we're gonna hit X on the keyboard to make it white as our foreground, so that when we write our text, we can easily read it on the background. Now the color of the text doesn't matter at this point because we will be changing it using layer styles, and this entire effect will be done using only layer styles which means that you can save this layer style as a preset that you can use at any point later on for any other text you might have, and it will be fully editable when finished, which is a good thing to be able to do, because if you make a mistake, you wanna go back and change it. If it's not editable, you have to redo the entire effect all over again. Whereas now that it will only be done in layer styles, you'll be able to use this effect on any text at any time and then change the text at any time. So let's bring up our text tool by hitting T on the keyboard or going over here to the text tool on our uh, uh, toolbar. Uh, and we're gonna choose Abaddon and we're going to make the font size, let's go over here to characters, it's a little easier to do. Uh, we're going to make the font size 350 pixels, or points, uh, and it's going to be uh, auto, the uh, spacing in between, the kerning, we're going to leave it zero, we'll fix that uh, as we always do in between. Uh, here is color, normal, make sure that nothing here is done so that when you do capital and lowercase, it will come out as capital and lowercase. Paragraph, we wanna just make it centered so that it will be in the center. You can use it any way that you want, but I prefer centered. So then we can click anywhere in the center here and we will type P-I-X-E-L space M-A-G-I-C, pixel magic. Now, uh, as I alluded to before, what we're going to do is we're gonna fix the kerning in between the letters. Now that's the spacing between letters. Now, as you can see from the P to the I, there's a very large space here, but from the I to the X, it's fairly small. So what you wanna do is you wanna even all this out. So you put your cursor in between, you click so that your cursor goes in between your letters that you need to fix. Then you hold down Alt and use the left and right uh, arrows on the keyboard in order to move the text closer or further apart. So left will bring it closer and right arrow will bring it further apart. So let's just clean this up a little bit. Uh, we'll bring everything a little bit closer so that it looks uh, a little, little better. Uh, like so. Magic. 
And that looks magical. Uh, the C looks a little too close, and the I a little too close. That looks pretty good right there. So then we hit the check mark up here, and we're now ready to begin. Let me just move our text by hitting V on the keyboard to get to the Move tool. And then let's move this back to the center of our document, like so, right about there. That looks good. So now, as I alluded to in the beginning, we will just be using layer styles to create this rust effect. And I'm not using any special textures. I'm not using any special uh, effects. It's just all standard basic stuff. So let's go down here to our layer styles. And the first one that we're going to be using is bevel and emboss. So here we go, bevel and emboss. And we're going to use inner bevel, chisel hard, 200% for our depth, our direction will be up, size is going to be 250 pixels, soften is going to be zero. Now shading, you want to make sure that you have use global light unchecked, you're going to want 131 degrees, then 43 degrees, gloss contour will be linear. Now linear is the default, if it's not on your default, then just make sure that you're on the very first one, which is a straight line linear. Anti-aliased is checked. Highlight mode is going to be color dodge and the color that we are using is EDE 3D3. Okay and uh, color dodge opacity is going to be 91 percent. Shadow mode will be multiply and the color that we're using here is 212121 which is a very dark gray. Opacity will be 100 percent. Then we're going to need the contour and then a texture. So let's start with contour right here. And the contour is going to be Gaussian. Now Gaussian is the one right here that kind of looks like an S, not linear, but an S. Uh, and that's what you're looking for. Anti-alias is unchecked. Range is going to be 100. Next, we're going to put on a texture to this. Uh, and it's going to be this texture right here, which is this guy. Now this guy is known as blistered paint. Okay, and it can be found, if you don't see it right away, by clicking on this little sprocket, going down here to Texture Fill, not Texture Fill 2, but Texture Fill, click on that and just hit Replace Current Patterns with the patterns from Texture Fill, hit OK, and it will be right here, the fourth one on the list. Once you have that, you want to scale it up to 700%. Your depth will be negative 6%. Invert is unchecked. Link with layer is checked. And as you can see already, let me move this out of the way. Uh, we'll move it. Yeah, we'll keep it up here. Uh, as you can see, we're already getting the pits and dents that you would expect to see in something that is rest rusted and falling apart. Next up, we are going to put in a stroke. Okay, uh, and the stroke that we are looking for is going to be a size of 8, a position is going to be centered, blend mode will be dissolve, opacity will be 39%, overprint is checked. The fill type is going to be gradient, so click on here, make sure that it is gradient, and the gradient that we're going to choose is called copper. It is this guy right here that looks like a copper uh, something copper shining in the light. We're going to make sure that reverse is checked, align with layer is checked, and the style that we want it to be is shape burst so that it comes out from the shape. Angle is going to be 90 degrees, make sure that dither is unchecked, and scale is going to be 100%. Next up is going to be inner glow, so let's click on inner glow. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do blend mode of color dodge. Opacity is going to be 90%. Noise is going to be 20%. And the color that we are using is going to be this color right here, C9, C, uh, C279. That's C9, C279. Hit OK. And then we're going to do a technique of softer. The source will be the edge, so that it comes in from the edge, not out from the center of our text. Choke is going to be 0%. Size is 107 pixels. Contour will be back here at the Gaussian. Uh, Anti-alias is check. Range is going to be 75%. And jitter is 100%. Next up will be satin. So click on satin, and we're going to make a blend mode of multiply. And the color that we're using is going to be uh, 5B2B00. Hit OK, and opacity is going to be 20%. Angle is going to be 90 degrees. Distance is 37 pixels. Size is 3 pixels. Contour here is going to be linear again. Anti-alias is checked, and so is invert. Next up, 
we are going to do two color overlays. So you're going to do a first color overlay, then hit the plus mark, and then go down to the second one. I already have it set up, of course, uh, but all you need to do is hit this little plus mark, think, and you make another color overlay. We don't need that one, so I will just delete it. So first color overlay, we're going to do a blend mode of difference. The color that we're using is a very deep blue, which is 061B2E. Okay, and it is at 85%. Then we're going to go down, uh, like I said, click on the plus to get the second color overlay, which will be the bottom color overlay. Make sure that it is on subtract. You want the color to be a fleshy kind of color, which will be, um, what have we got here? E, uh, B, uh, e D, B, D, 9, 5. So that's E, B, D, B. Uh, e D B D 9 5. I don't know why I'm having trouble saying that, but I am. Uh, then we're going to make the opacity 69%. The next thing that we're going to do is do a pattern overlay. So click on pattern overlay, and you can see that we are getting much more rusty looking text already. So we're going to do blend mode of dissolve. Opacity is going to be 90%. And the pattern that we are using is this very last pattern down here in the same texture not texture two, but texture, and it's called shag rug. So if you've already changed it uh, when you did the texture for bevel and emboss, it will still be on that same texture patterns, and it will be the last one called shag rug. Okay, uh, scale will be 123%, and link width layer is checked. Next is going to be two drop shadows to help separate it from the background. So the first drop shadow. Uh, and you get the second one the same way just by hitting the little plus. So the first one is going to give us a shine up on top. See if I turn this off, there goes the shine. And then if I turn it on, it comes right back. That gives you the shine that it looks like uh, it's shining off of the rust and onto whatever surface your text happens to be sitting upon. So the blend mode that we're using is color dodge. And the color that we're using is FFE5AD then the opacity is going to be 60%, angle is going to be negative 35 degrees, make sure again that use global light is unchecked, distance will be 13 pixels, spread is 0, size is 13, contour is linear again, noise is going to be 9%, that gives it a little sparkle, and layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. Then we go to the second drop shadow that we create, and our blend mode will be uh, multiply. The color that we're using is not pure black. It is going to be 030303, which is very close to pure black, but not quite. The opacity is going to be 79%. Angle is 135 degrees. Use global light, as always, is unchecked. Distance will be 17. Spread is 17. Size is 7. Contour is linear again. Anti-alias is unchecked. Noise is zero. Layer knocks out drop shadow and you now have your text finished and ready to go. So hit OK, and we now have our rusted text. That's really all there is to it. And this looks great on just about any background that you might want to use it on, including uh, grunge or uh, some kind of distressed background or even on a Christmas card if you're so inclined. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.